Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. We have a very typical day happening here today. Good sunshine, lots of clouds, all in all a very good solar day. So I've made a little adjustment to this system that I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago. We've got 200 watts of solar coming through the wall here being controlled with the Victron 75 volt 15 amp MPPT smart solar charge controller. Got the Phoenix pure sine wave inverter 12 volt 375 watts and we're storing all that power into this 12.8 volt 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate Redodo. So I have pretty much been keeping up with the 200 watts on this system. We've been running it around uh, with a lot of different tests back in here and getting used to the Phoenix system, which I really like, by the way. But in the past several days, the 200 watts was not quite keeping up where I want to keep the battery. I've never let it really drop below 30% full. Never had to, but I could see with a longer stretch of darker days that I wasn't going to really keep up. So I thought, well, how much more power can I get through that uh, smaller charge controller there? You know, this is one of their smaller charge controllers. It can't take a huge amount of power. But I thought, how much more could I try and get in there? And also we do have that uh, Victron uh, Bluetooth smart dongle as well tied into this system. Haven't decided exactly where to mount this yet. That's why it's just sitting here on top of the battery, but it works, connects to the devices, can control that inverter remotely, which is kind of nice. But let's go back outside and I'll show you what I'm doing to, to maximize this little charge controller and keep this battery basically completely full no matter what my conditions are. And now the clouds are uh, getting very thin and moving out and we're getting a very, very bright burst of sun on these panels. And this is kind of where I have a, like a test array going. I've got a permanent array back there that's feeding another system. That one there is even feeding another system. But back to the system we're talking about. These two panels right here are what have been feeding that system. These are both 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels from Bouge RV. I like these panels quite a bit. They've got the nine bus bar system going in every cell. And you can see the sun is bright and sunny and beating down on 200 watts. But what I did yesterday is I came out and I added these two panels as well. Now these are uh, basically the same size. They're not identical. These are two new power nine bus bar system, 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels as well. And what I did is I tied these two in series and then these two in series and then connected them with a branch connector in parallel. And like I said, these were keeping up with the system very, very well. Uh, my battery was never dropping down below 30%, which is kind of the way I like to work these batteries, try and build the system to where it won't drop that low. And then I had these two extras and I decided, well, I'm going to tie those up and see what can I do to just keep everything more on the full side. So in each of these strings, right now I'm uh, looking at the new powers. 
I tied the positive and negative of these two panels together. And then I did exactly the same thing over here on the Bouge RVs. I tied the positive and negative together. And then I'm just going to lift this up to show you what that branch connector looks like underneath here. And then this is the positive side right here. So I took the positive off of one set of strings and snapped it in place here to the branch connector. The positive from the other string into there. And then this line goes in to my solar charge controller. And then it's exactly the same thing on the negative. I have another uh, branch connector underneath over here, which we can't see, but it's the same thing. I take the negative off of one string and then the negative off the other string, and it looks exactly the same on the negative feed. So now I have 400 watts tied in to that system. And with the sun beating down on that like it is right now, and I mean, there's no clouds coming through there, how can that little charge controller handle 400 watts? And the short answer to that is it does not let in 400 watts with those tied in series parallel. So right there is the maximum amount of power it allows in from those 400 watts. And right there, it's 209 watts coming in. You can see the voltage, 36.3536. That's the voltage coming in. So the voltage actually dropped from what it normally would run at with just 200 watts. So the voltage dropped the amps, 5.8 amps. And then here's where this charge controller does its job. At 209 watts, well, there, there's a cloud. <laughs> but you can see it was holding when it goes right back up, and hopefully it will while I'm still talking. It'll go right up to like 14.8, 14.9 amps. So the charge controller is working. It's letting in the maximum amount of power off of that array, but not allowing it to go over. Now it won't go over this 210 or 209 watts, and there it is, 14.9 amps going into the battery, completely maxing out this charge controller. So why would I put those two extra 100 watt panels on this? And I can show you like yesterday, how it made a huge difference in being able to do this. Now here, of course, we can see the clouds rolling through as they do and how fast that charge controller works. And there it is, back up to max. You can see 14.7, 14 point something going into the, the battery. And the battery voltage, 13.68. So well on its way to getting a full charge. And that's it. That's the max it's letting in right there. And that is the max it's going to let in. So now one way that I could be getting uh, the full 400 watts a panel would be to have a, you know, a larger charge controller like the MPPT 130, for example, which is kind of, I think, the next step up in the size of charge controller. And that would allow for the 400 watts to come in. But there I am maxing out 209 watts. 14.8 amps. So this is great. And I'll show you what it did yesterday that made those extra panels really make a difference. So in a lot of my other strings, I just have, uh, like in the back, I've got 500 watts all tied in series, not series parallel. And what happens is, is if one of these panels, if they're connected that way, starts to get some shade, it really, uh, you know, drops the amount of power 
from the whole array down significantly. So yesterday afternoon, this power, I mean, this panel started getting a shadow on this corner, which basically took both of those panels out of the equation uh, as far as generating any real power. But where the sun is right now, these two stayed in complete sunshine for several, or well, I'll say a few hours longer than this one was just catching the corner of shade from the trees in the background. So yeah, those two went out of production earlier in the day for the most part. And then this, this little separate string kept on going. And it was, it's just the reverse in the morning. Uh, this morning, when the sun first came out, uh, these were in a little bit of shade right here from the trees in the background where the sun's coming up in the east, while those over here were catching full sun way earlier in the morning. So now back in the house, uh, just moments later, of course, a cloud's rolling through, 96 watts. You can see 13.68 voltage in the batteries, well on our way, still just barely noon, uh, to getting to a complete full charge. Now, even in those lower light conditions, now all four panels, they're working, where if I only had two hooked up, I'd be getting about half that right now with the clouds that are rolling through, but the extra two are keeping it up there high enough to where uh, throughout the day, it extends my charging day by quite a bit. Like I mentioned, some of the panels uh, are working better at the early morning sun, but they all still work fine together in giving me basically twice the amount of power I would be getting anyway with the sun rolling through. But here's where it made the difference in having that longer charge day. And I'll show you. So here we are. I only hooked those panels up right there on uh, yesterday. And you can see it ran up so much more. How much more? Well, I'll let that focus. So the previous day, was a very good day on just 200 watts of solar. I got 660 watt hours of power. Yesterday, with those extra two, you can see I got 820 watt hours of power. And by noon today, I've already got 570 watt hours worth of power. So this is going to click into absorption mode uh, here very shortly and it'll go all the way to float. So, and then this is how it was running in the previous days on just 200 watts of solar. And you can see, like I mentioned earlier, these are the darker, cloudier days where, you know, 200 watts just wasn't quite getting things up to where I would like them to be. I still did fine, but I really wanna get them up to a nice full charge. So if I would have had the extra 200 watts on these days, these values would have doubled. And, and I would just be staying a lot closer to being topped off. So this is a case where adding a couple of extra panels, even if you're not pumping in 400 watts, it makes a huge difference. In the length of the day that's charging, like I said, earlier in the morning, later in the afternoon, one side of those series parallel connections uh, won't be taken out by a shadow on the other side. So this makes a huge difference. Yeah, that what that big tall day right there, that was yesterday. And I was very happy that I went ahead and used those two extra panels that I had. And it's gonna make all the difference in the world. Now, if I truly wanted to be pumping in the 400 watts, I mean, I could definitely bump up the size of the charge controller, but I'm making this little thing work here I had the extra panels and really for these type of conditions out here where we get lots of these uh, intermittent sun and clouds rolling through, that's just a typical day here. And by tying up 400 watts worth of panels, it makes a huge, huge difference. 
Oh, and look at that. Just as I finished that video, it went right down into, or right up to absorption right there. Nice. Yeah, and as you can see, watch it pulse 212 watts up, down to four, holding it at 14.2, balancing everything just as it should. Obviously in absorption, when it drops just a teeny bit, it'll pulse in some higher wattage, get it back up there while it's getting all of those cells balanced out, and it'll hold that 14.2 for two hours, and then click over into float. So right now it's just doing its little dance, making sure it stays up at 14.2. Gotta love the Victron for its speed and accuracy, just holding it exactly where you want. Yeah, glad I caught that too. See, the clouds are rolling through. All four of those panels together only producing 90 watts right now. It will go right back up to 14.2 the minute the sun touches those again. But at any rate, got up to a full charge today. And that's how it goes. Pretty happy with that system. And I'm really happy I went ahead and tied those extra solar panels up. That's going to make a huge, huge difference, as I've mentioned. <laughs> All right. Very good. Yeah, and here it is just a couple minutes later. And the sun is again fully, fully hitting these panels. Uh, and a cloud will roll through here in a minute. But right now, it's maxing out. That charge controller, as it should, the charge controller is taking care of everything. And yeah, this is going to get all the way up to float so easily today. And even on the darkest of dark days, uh, it'll be, make a big difference having four panels pumping into that little system. So this is how I did it out here. This is an experiment for me. I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm just showing you how I'm making it work with some extra components that I had. Those two little branch connectors underneath there. Pause to neg. Pause to neg. Separate strings. And then bring them in to the branch connectors in parallel. And that's how I can stretch and maximize those dark days. The shorter days. Yeah. So, anyway, that's how it's going today. Beautiful day. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Catch some sun. Aloha. Yeah, very happy. Almost up to float or absorption anyway by noon. That's a difference. <laughs>